Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, my fellow brothers and sisters. I bring you greetings from the Maple Land, the land north of your country. I mean Canada, the best place to be. I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I also bring you greetings from my national head, Apostle Dr. Emmanuel Anthony Owusu, my own father. He sends his greetings to all of you. Uh, I bring you greetings from my area head, Apostle Daniel Neil Omote Engman. And the believers in PRWC Peel and your fellow young people in Canada send all your greetings and they send their well wishes. Amen. I am excited to be with you this very evening as we worship God, as we fellowship with Him in, in, in this day. It is a pleasure and a joy to have this privilege to speak to you. And I want to salute my own father and our national head, Apostle Michael Ajiman Amwako, um, and the entire national executive for the privilege that mean um, to come speak at this conference. I don't want to forget my own senior brother, Pastor Dr. Michael George Podofi, the National Youth and Pencil Leader uh, 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 for, for gracing me this occasion uh, to come and share fellowship. And my brother, um, Pastor Dr. Carl Badu, the Pencil Leader um, for the great work they are doing and the entire Pencil Leadership and Youth Leadership, the great work that you guys are doing in the U.S. It, it is a joy to see what God is doing amongst you and how God is using you powerfully not only in the U.S., but in the nations across the world. Amen. Um, this evening, I have been given a simple task, and my task is to speak to you on the theme, being transformed into his image through worship. Hallelujah. Three key words stands out in that theme for me. Transformation image and worship and I pray to God that he will give us the grace as we delve into his word in the next short few minutes uh, as we, we, we try to understand what God wants to do and how God wants to use us in this time. Amen. Because we have to demonstrate his glory. So why don't you turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. We'll read the first two verses and I'm reading from the New Living Translation and I read and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and good and pleasing and perfect hallelujah amen in the book of genesis um, the very beginning of the bible god made an interesting statement when he was creating man and he said let us create man in our image and likeness so you and i have been created to bear the image of God. The desire of God, the will of God was to make us in his image and his likeness. That is what God did. So when you see an individual, God will want you to portray his image, who God is. And I was trying to understand what the meaning of image was. And what I came across was that Image is a representation of something or someone. So your presence here on earth is for you to be a representation of God, for you to be an extension of God, for you to be God's ambassador, God's representation here in the USA, here in whatever country that you are in. For those of you listening to us online, God wants you to be his image. But as you and I understand and we know in Genesis chapter 3, that image was distorted. The enemy took advantage of, quote unquote, our ignorance to distort the image of God in us. So when he encountered the woman, he would say to the woman, no, you will not die, but your eyes will be open and you will become like God. No, you will not become like God, for God has already made you like himself. He has made you in his image and his likeness. So as a man, as a believer, as a person, you did not have to do any other thing to bear the image of God because he had already made you in his image. If you look at the book of Psalm 8 verse 5, Bible will say, 
God created man to be a little lower than the angels. And here the word angels is Elohim, is God. Meaning God created you to be a little lower than himself. So in the same book of Psalm, he says, and you are gods. Meaning you are lower gods. Hallelujah. So since the fall of man, God in his wisdom has sought to help us understand, to transform our thinking, to change our thinking, to correct the mistake, the deception in us that we do not carry his image and we have to do something to gain the image of God. We have to do something to attain the likeness of God. Meanwhile, God has done that for us. Praise the Lord. And when you read the Bible in the New Testament, God, Bible will say that in John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God. In verse 14, the Word became flesh the word became human and made his dwelling amongst us. That word, that was God, now took upon a human nature. That is the person we call Jesus Christ. Meaning now God comes and dwells amongst us. So Bible will continue to say in the Hebrew that Jesus Christ became the exact representation Christ became the exact image, the exact presence of God. So Christ came to represent God. So Christ will say to Philip, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father because I am the embodiment of the Godhead. In him lived the Godhead. Praise the Lord. So this day, I want you to understand that you bear the image of God. You carry the image of God. God has already made you in his image. So when you are, you are made in the image of God, wherever you go, people have to see Christ in you. People have to see the glory of God upon your life. People have to see a new individual who has been made right with God, whose image has been transformed. Hallelujah. See, most of us are, are, are owners of vehicles and when that vehicle has a problem, we take it to the garage, we take it to the mechanic for them to fix the, the, the problem that we have. For those of us who are a bit privileged, we take it to the, the dealership uh, where we got the car from because they have a better understanding of the functions of the car. In the same way, God is the one who made you and I in his image. So when the image was distorted, it was right, it was befitting for the one who made that image to come and correct the mistake. Praise the Lord. In Hebrews, verse 9, chapter 9, verse 14, Bible talks about the fact that when Christ Jesus died, he entered into the new tabernacle. That tabernacle was not made with human hands. And by his blood, he cleansed us so that we, he cleansed our conscience of sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God. So before you can worship God, before you can offer God through worship, there got to be a change in that image. The distortion has to be corrected. And that is what Christ Jesus does. When you come to Christ through the living blood, the blood that flows from Calvary, Bible says he cleanses our conscience. He washes our sinful deeds. So we, our image will be made anew. So we will become a new person. As the book of Romans says, that you will become a new person. You will become the right image God wants you to be that you can offer him acceptable worship to be able to worship the living God our conscience our thinking which was distorted by the lies of the enemy has to be cleansed and this happens when we offer ourselves unto the living God Jesus was saying I, I, you did not require sacrifices of goats cattle or bulls but you gave me a body to offer God has given you a body to offer that is why Paul is saying now my dear brothers I beseech you with the message of God offer your bodies as living sacrifices the best worship you got to offer unto God it's not coming with, uh, uh, with money or anything it's offering yourself unto God that is the sacrifice God is looking for offering yourself unto God in the new image in the new likeness of God hallelujah Hallelujah. You don't need any animal sacrifices. What you need is a body. What do you have today to offer unto God? What do you have today to give unto Jesus? Oh, you need to give him your body. That is why you need to offer yourself so that he will transform your thinking. Why do you need your thinking transformed? Because in the Garden of Eden, the enemy distorted our thinking. We became a people who believed in lies. We believed that we need to do something to attain the image of God. Oh, 
you will not die. But when you eat of this fruit, you will become like God. Your eyes will be open. So we are seeking to become like God. We are doing everything to become like God. Meanwhile, Babu says, he said, let us make man in our image and likeness. You have been made in the image of God. That is why when you are offering yourself in worship, God is reforming and transforming that image in you. God transforms you into the right image, into the right person. That is who you are, the right person in Christ Jesus. This evening, I pray in the name of Jesus that you allow yourself to be transformed by the power of the Holy Ghost. You allow yourself to be transformed by the glory of God, that you will become God's image. Hallelujah. See, David in Psalm 8 verse verse 5 will say, You have crowned me, who? Him, the man, with glory and honor. Meaning, when you were made in the image of God, you carried the glory of God. Jump with me to the book of Exodus. Chapter 24. Exodus 24. And we'll read verse 15 and 16. We'll we'll add the 17 to it. Then Moses climbed up the mountain and the cloud covered it and the glory of the Lord settled down on Mount Sinai and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, the Lord called to Moses from inside the cloud to the Israelite at the foot of the mountain. The glory of the Lord appeared at the summit like a consuming fire. The glory of God. The glory of God. Listen, the image in that you were made into for, was for you to carry God's glory. That wherever you stand, you see God's glory. Wherever you stand, you manifest God's glory. Wherever you are, people will see you and see the glory of God. Bible says, if you read the account in Exodus, God will call Moses up the hill with the elders of Israel. And if you read further in, in, in the verse 10, Bible says, they saw the God of Israel under his feet. There seemed to be a surface of brilliant blue lapis lazuli as clear as the sky itself. And though these nobles of Israel gazed upon God, he did not destroy them. See, these men, Moses included, they saw the glory of God. In in the same book of Exodus, in 33, Moses will say, God, show me your glory. God, I want to see who you are. Asking him, asking God to show your glory, to, for God to reveal his image unto you. The image of God is the glory of God. And so if you have been made in the image of God, meaning you carry the glory of God, Ezekiel will see God, he will see the spirit of the living God, and he will describe the glory that he saw. That is the glory that has come upon you because you have been made in his image. You have been transformed in his image. That transformation comes when you offer yourself unto Jesus. When you go to him who is the maker of all things. In him was life and the life became the light of men. All things were created by him and through him. So you were created by him. You were created through him. So if the image of God in you has been distorted, the only person who can fix that image is Jesus Christ. That is why Romans will say, now offer your body unto him so he can correct, he can transform that, 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 uh, and change your thinking process and change your thought process that you will now understand and know that I am made in the image of God. I carry the glory of God. His glory is upon me. His presence is upon me. That wherever I stand, people got to see the beauty of Jesus in the inside of me. People got to see Jesus in me. That every day of my life, I am offering my body as an acceptable worship unto God because the right image will lead you to offer the right kind of worship. If you don't have the right image, you don't have the understanding of the right image, your worship is anyhow. That is why Paul would say to the people of Athens that you worship a God you do not know. You say this is for an unknown God. I am going to talk to you about that God that you don't know. The God who created all things and who determined where each and every one of us got to live. You are made in that image. That God created you. And it is important that you understand who you are. Then you can offer God through worship. Because worship is not about singing songs. Worship is not about 
about jumping up and down. Worship is a life of holiness. Worship is about righteousness. So when you offer your body as true sacrifice, oh, that is your acceptable worship. In the days of old, the animal will be brought and offered on the, on the altar of God. The animal had no shame. Oh, the animal had no right. He, 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 he was just allowed himself. That's why we say that Jesus was like a lamb being led to the slaughter. He was silent. Oh, my dear friend, my dear brother, I want to make you understand that you got to offer yourself unto God so he can transform you. You got to offer yourself unto God so he can change you. You got to offer yourself unto God so he will make you anew in the right image, in the right likeness so that his glory will come upon you. So when you say my image, his glory manifested, then, then you will understand what that is because wherever you are, you are manifesting the glory of God. Wherever you stand, you are manifesting the beauty of Jesus. Whatever you say, it got to be the exact words of God. For Paul will say, we are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. That is who you are. You represent God here on earth. So get people to see the beauty of Jesus in you by living a life of righteousness, by living a life of holiness. Yes, these guys... Moses and the elders, they saw God, but they did not die. His glory came upon them. So when Moses came down from the mountain, Bible says he was glowing. People, he had to cover his face so people will, 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 will not be afraid to look at him. But that glory was fading. Your glory is not fading because God is taking you from one glory to another. He is increasing the glory upon your life. As long as you are going to stay connected to him, as long as you're going to offer yourself to him as a living sacrifice, Sacrifice. He is going to change you into that image, that glorious image, oh, that he has prepared for you. For David will say, you have crowned him, you have crowned man with glory and honor. Oh, God has crowned you, my dear friend. God has crowned you, my brother, with glory and honor. Not only have you become glorious, you have become an honorable person because he who encounters Christ Jesus does not say the same. Oh, I pray that today you will find Jesus. Even in this worship session, as we lift up our voices and worship God, in the beauty of his holiness, you will find Jesus, that he will change your life into another person. You will encounter him, that you become another man. His glory will envelop you, that your image will become his glory manifested. God, which will bless you, my dear friend, for giving year to me this evening. And I pray that as we lift up our voices in worship, God's glory will come down. May the Lord God bless you. May the Lord God keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you in the name of Jesus. God bless you again. Amen.